I want to say something real quick about uh, uh, martial arts and combat martial arts and traditional martial arts and adrenaline based martial arts and uh, what was that? What's that? Uh, you know, Jeet Kune Do, Jeet Kune Do, whatever works and uh, with some of the others. Um, uh, reality based martial arts. Um, <clears throat> What I want to say to that is um, there's a current misconception that uh, that somehow finally in the 20th century modern man discovered the answer to uh, real martial arts and combat you know uh, related martial arts and how to survive real street encounters. Okay. Well, this is this is a this is a misconception, uh, and I can see how it happened, but <clears throat> you know it, it's ridiculous and it's egotistical and it's uh, pompous to assume that we somehow discovered what works and what doesn't work in the 20th century. Okay, um, there there were people in the past whose grandfathers, fathers, and then their sons lived or died by the blade. Um, there were people that went away for years and years, if not a decade or more, fighting battles. I mean, they went from Europe to the Middle East and back, <laughs> fighting, okay? These people saw their friends die. They they saw instructors die. They saw they saw people with different ideas die. They 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 killed. Some of them were killed. Some of them passed on what they they learned before they were killed, and some of them didn't. But it's like uh, to assume that those people that that trained, knowing that they were live live or die by the sword or by the knife. Um, to assume that these guys didn't know what they were talking about after a decade in the field doing this, okay? Um, it's just it's it's just insane to think that that these people did not know the answer. Uh, another example is the Philippines, all over the world. But in the Philippines, I mean, you have all these islands. They had waves and waves of invasions of different peoples and different cultures and uh, they knew that their, li their, their village and their own personal lives depending on, depended on them and their fellow villagers and fellow uh, family members knowing how to fight. Okay? So, to, to, to assume that these people didn't know how to really survive a real encounter and, and, and that we only discovered it in the 20th century, century is just, it's just incredibly just, is hilarious, okay? Um, you know, it, 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 stuff that worked didn't originate with the Israelis, and it didn't originate in the 50s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, nor the year 2000, you know? So, to, 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 to say that traditional doesn't work, uh, to say that um, that we've just figured it out this century is just p preposterous. I mean, it's fraudulent on its face. <clears throat> the people that lived back when you lived or died by the sword, those people had it all figured out. Now, here's the problem. They passed that down. Well, some of them didn't pass it down. Some of them got lost. Example, Europe. Uh, some of it devolved into sports, like modern foil fencing. Um, some of it simply wasn't passed on father, son, father to son. Uh, some of it uh, devolved into sport. I mean, if you look at judo, they purposely took out some of the more deadly techniques from jiu-jitsu to make it so that no one would be hurt. Because, see, that's what a sport is all about. Nobody gets hurt. It's all, you know... Uh, a sport, it's uh, to train your spiritual nature, it's, it, it's, it's all kinds of different things. So, you know, and a lot of the martial arts today are, are, are you know, uh, 
kitty daycare centers. Um, so you may have been uh, passed on a martial art that is traditional and has been uh, modified in some way to not make it effective. You may have been taught a traditional art by somebody who didn't really learn the real thing. Um, you may have been taught by somebody who didn't study long enough to figure out how it all worked out. Um, you may have been taught something that turned into a sport or a spiritual endeavor to teach you discipline. I mean, there, there's so many different things, but for you to say that traditional martial arts don't work is wrong. Traditional martial arts work fine. Maybe you learned a traditional martial art that has been screwed up over time or evolved towards something that isn't, uh, that is no longer suited for its original purpose. And I can guarantee you, we spend billions and billions of dollars on training and weapons and things of that nature. That kind of energy that we spend on that now was spent back then to learn how to use the bow and arrow, to learn how to use the spear, to learn how to use the knife, to learn how to use the sword, because they realized their nation would live or die based on those skill. The individual knew that they would live or die based on that skill. So you're telling me that these people didn't know what they were doing and did not develop systems over generations that worked? And we only figured this stuff out in the 20th century? We're a bunch of pansies. These guys <laughs> did it for real. Life or death. Okay? I mean, you can't say, well, I'm a boxer or I'm a... I'm a mixed martial arts guy and I've won this many fights with a TKO or a tap out. It's like, okay, well, this guy, like, uh, he's been in, like, you know, <laughs> hundreds of life or death encounters, but you knew more, more than him. See, and, he, and here's the difference, too. This is, I'm kind of stealing this from somebody else. Somebody else said this. Um, you know, if you go to a mixed martial arts fight or a boxing match and you lose, you come back and what do you say? Well, I've got to work on this, I've got to work on this, I've got to train harder, I've got to be tougher, I've got to get the mental, psychological attitude different. Okay, that's fine. You continue on and you continue passing on whatever you've learned to the next generation. If you go out and you fight for real, life or death, if you lose, you don't come back. So, your knowledge ain't passed on because you're dead. Okay? If you go out there and you survive, then what you teach is much more valuable than somebody's done a couple of KOs or, or tap outs because you know if you lose with if you lose in, in a sport you come back you still teach you're the loser but you're still teaching if you go on a life or death encounter and you lose you don't come back you don't teach you're done okay so anyway I, I, the the idea is that you know, don't be confused. The people, the ancient knowledge had a much greater appreciation of life or death, reality-based combat systems than we do. And the funny thing about some of these combat reality-based systems is they draw their techniques from sportized systems. They already had a real martial art that devolved into these different uh, sportized and uh, um, spade versions, and then they try and take techniques out of them and change them around and make them combat effective again. They were combat effective when they first started out. You're taking a devolved thing and trying to make it work when, you know, the original always did work.